Hi, I'm Steve Grad, the Principal Authenticator for PSA DNA. During my time here at PSA DNA, which started in 2002, I've been fortunate to handle some of the hobby's greatest items and authenticate them for the company PSA DNA here. I've also been fortunate enough to see plenty of forgeries and high-end forgeries and things that would get by many collectors, many dealers, many auction houses, but that's what we're here for. And we help everybody out that we can, especially people that just don't know. And one of the interesting submissions I had recently was Jesse Burkett. Jesse Burkett died in 1953, and you can imagine how tough of a signature he is, let alone on a baseball. Jesse Burkett was a tough single ball autograph. His autograph exists out there, but finding Burkett on a single baseball is quite the task. We've only seen a small handful. I have one featured here on my screen, which is an authentic example. And Jesse Burkett's signature sells for somewhere in the range of fifty to sixty thousand dollars just on a single signed baseball. Well recently I received a submission, Jesse Burkett, and it kind of drew suspicion for me when I saw the ball originally, but the more I got into the ball, the more I realized it had issues. And I wanted to kind of go through a step-by-step -step process of what we do here when we get a high-end baseball in or something that's suspicious to us. And some of the items that I use, some of the technology that we're able to utilize here really helps us do our job that much better. One of the items we use here at PSA DNA is something called a ProScope. Now, a ProScope is a microscope, and it has a light uh, affixed to the end of it, but what this does is gives us a great eye, and this is stuff I can't see under a loop, but it's, it's great to use for magnification. And when I use the ProScope, it's very simple. You just place it over the item gently. I usually try and not touch the item, and I'm able to get a better idea of what is there. And now what I'm trying to look for with Burkett is I'm looking for the ink. And I'm looking to how um, the letters are formed here. And when I start to look more and more and more, I could see ink that's pulling, ink that's fresh, and that's a bad sign because Jesse Burkett died in 1953. And when you look at a signature from the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, that ink should have some age to it. And unfortunately, when I look at this baseball, um, I'm seeing a ball that has non-aged ink, and this ink almost looks brand new to me. Now, forgers will use techniques where they'll age the ink, um, they'll mix fountain pen ink with blood, they'll put it in an oven, they'll do anything they could do. They'll mix it with dirt, they'll mix it with sand, they'll try and make the ink look old because that's what they have to do. But unfortunately in this case, whoever did this signature did a very poor job. One of the instruments we have at our disposal is a video spectral comparator. And maybe you've seen this on CSI shows, CSI Miami. It's actually been featured on many shows. What this machine allows us to do is get underneath the signature, get inside the baseball basically, and kind of see what's there. And it's a very simple process. Different light is, um, different light is sh it shines onto the ball. We're able to see it in different shades, and that's what we do here with the Jesse Burkett ball. Something caught my eye immediately when I put this ball into the video spectral comparator. And I started seeing other signatures on this baseball. And one of the first signatures that caught my eye was Yogi Berra. Now, Yogi Berra and Jesse Burkett might have had a little overlap at some point in time, but Yogi Berra and Jesse Burkett shouldn't be on the same ball together. And then I started seeing other signatures. Tug McGraw, Jim McAndrew, Nolan Ryan. And then I realized I was looking at a New York Mets ball, and there's Al Weiss down there on the bottom. And I started going over the ball more and more, and here's Rube Walker, who was a coach with the team, and there's Jerry Grody. And I started to realize that I was looking at about a 1970 New York Mets ball. Now, how could have Jesse Burkett and the New York Mets signed together? And Here's our problem, folks, is that what the individual had done with this ball and the person that basically created it was painted over the other signatures to conceal them, and they forged the signature of Jesse Burkett on top of the Mets ball. What they did is they found a period ball. This is a Warren Giles baseball made by Spaulding. They matched basically the tone and feel of the ball and you can't really see it with the naked eye. You could look at it and say, well, it's kind of got a different sheen on it, and there's a strange abrasion there. And over here, too, well, maybe it was used. 
Well, what the guy did is he basically painted over the entire baseball, concealed about 26 or 27 signatures, and then they penned a Jesse Burkett signature on top of it. There's a company that paints balls, and, you know, let's say it was an A's ball, a Philly A's ball, and had Jimmy Fox. Well, buying a Jimmy Fox single is pretty tough, so a lot of times they would paint over all the other signatures and leave you with a Jimmy Fox. I think what we've done today is illustrate the fact that anything could happen. I was really intrigued by this, to see a whole entire team ball painted over, and it was very obvious to me that this wasn't a 1940s or 50s team ball. It was a late 1969, 1970 Mets ball that was painted over to conceal signatures and then penned with Jesse Burkett, and it goes to show you anything can happen. You need to be on your guard at all times, and you need to watch out for high-end forgeries for players like Jesse Burkett, who died in 1953, and just keep an eye out. If it is too suspicious, it probably is. At PSA DNA, we're here to help you. And this is a great example of what happens when an unsuspecting collector comes across a great baseball. You need to have it checked out. And it's a good service, it's a great service, and we provide it for a reasonable price. And in this case, if you had spent thirty dollars or $40,000 on this baseball, you might be out of your money, considering how things go these days on the eBay and Internet. And submitting these items is as easy as going to the Internet, psadna.com. There's an easy online form you fill out. You submit the ball, and we inspect your collectibles for you. And when you buy something with PSA DNA, you can feel confident it is the real deal. And in the case of Jesse Burkett, this one wasn't the real deal. Thank you.